COVID has intensified a lot of um, issues for families. In the 10 years that Kim Ensa has managed this food bank and family support centre, she has never been so busy. It must be really hard for you because you live here, this is your community, you know people who are having to use the food bank. That's quite hard, especially when you know the families and you know that they're struggling. All through lockdown, the families that have come through and listening to their personal stories, the struggle that they have, um, losing loved ones, um, not being able to pay for the funeral, um, it, it, it's so upsetting. The Malachi Centre is in Billsley, an area with high levels of deprivation. Many families here in Birmingham, England's second city, were struggling before the pandemic. A new report today has found that some are now suffering even more, losing health, jobs and educational opportunities. It's really been mentally exhausting. Ruth Beresford is a mother to four children. Her youngest has struggled during lockdown with his mental health. I feel my son has withdrawn more because he hasn't, you know, because of having so long off school before September, he actually withdrew within himself and he didn't hardly talk. Caring for her son and shielding herself because of her underlying health conditions, Ms Bereford says it's been a real struggle and she's had to resort to using Malachi's food bank. As a mother, when you think about not being able to afford food for the week, that must be heartbreaking. It is, yeah. It's almost degrading because you feel as if you can't provide for your children and they depend on you and you feel, you feel almost neglectful because you can't do what you normally do for them. England recorded the highest death rate from COVID in Europe, partly because of pre-existing social inequalities, according to today's report. It was written by the professor of epidemiology known for his landmark work on the social determinants of health, Sir Michael Marmot. Marcus Rashford drew the attention and the shame of the country to the fact that poor children were going to bed hungry can we afford not to spend on that? We can't afford not to do it. Professor Marmot found that the more deprived the area, the higher the mortality rate. And those from a black, Asian or minority ethnic group are more likely to become infected and then seriously ill, partly because they're more likely to live in poorer areas and work in high-risk occupations. This pandemic has revealed and amplified health inequalities and the social conditions that lead to ill health. With the vaccine being rolled out, there's talk of Britain getting back to normal. But what will that normal look like for families who are struggling? Some are now asking whether the pandemic can be used as an opportunity to build a fairer society. I'll grab this box. Okay. At the Malachi Centre, they received a huge donation of toys for their Christmas parcels. The organisation was founded more than 20 years ago by Gordon Lee. The word was, of course, that the, uh, the pandemic knew no boundaries, but what we quickly found out, of course, that the most disadvantaged uh, communities were disproportionately affected. I am uncomfortable about the gap that, that, that there exists between people of increasing wealth and increasing hardship. We have to really want to change poverty and hardship in this country. All these amazing gifts. That's brilliant, isn't it? Will be going to families this Christmas time. Kim Ensa had been expecting around 2,000 donations, but instead the local community ended up donating 16,000 gifts and toys. It's lovely to see a community come together, and I think people are realising this is a struggle to a lot, a lot of families. Professor Marmot's report has a stark conclusion. If these inequalities aren't tackled, many children's lives will be permanently blighted. Darshna Sonny, Channel 4 News, Birmingham. Well, when I spoke to the author of that inequality report, Sir Michael Marmot, I asked him whether he saw parallels with the transformation seen in Britain in the aftermath of the Second World War. This is a moment, and the reason that I call my report Build Back Fairer, is that we do not want to go back to the status quo because the report I produced in February 2020 showed a slowdown in improvement in health that was more marked in the UK than in any other rich country except Iceland and the US, an increase in health inequalities, and life expectancy was declining for the poorest people outside London. And then the pandemic made everything worse. 
it exposed the underlying inequalities in society and amplified them. What is so extraordinary is that when you look at the map of England as reproduced in your report, you realise that if you lay uh, the worst outbreaks of COVID, a map of it, on top of a map of impoverishment, they match. They map absolutely. And the striking thing, and the reason that I draw a link between where we were in February 2020 and where we are with COVID is that if you look at where people live and classify the area by degree of deprivation, you see the familiar social gradient in health, the more deprived the area, the higher the mortality, shorter the life expectancy, and the mortality from COVID-19 follows that same social gradient almost identically, which means that the social causes of inequalities in health more generally are the social causes of inequalities in COVID-19 mortality more generally, both by level of deprivation and by region of the country. Ethnicity, what part yeah. does that play? When we see the very high mortality from COVID-19 among Black, Asian and minority ethnic groups, particularly Black British and Pakistani and Bangladeshi, most of that excess can be explained by geography, where people live, and other socioeconomic characteristics. So it's not something intrinsic to ethnicity. You highlight the Northeast and Northwest, which are, of course, the worst in terms of the figures. How could anybody change, transform the communities that have been so badly hit in those specific areas? So the first is take the immediate actions that are needed. But the second is, if we're talking about build back fairer, we've got to create the conditions for have people to have better lives, which doesn't necessarily mean high speed railways, um, but it does mean creating the conditions from early childhood for good early child development, better education, job opportunities, investing in communities, and all of those things. And it's not an unmanageable problem. The evidence is pretty clear that if we want to do it, we can. Sir Michael, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you.